HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts showed off some of their new renovations. We have answers to our question of the week. We'll take you inside Hiller's football training camp as they prepare for the 2015 season and we will revisit some of the events that happened throughout the summer. But first, the 300th anniversary celebration is Friday, September 11th through Sunday, September 13th. Here is everything you can expect during the absolutely packed weekend. Hopkinton incorporated as a town in 1715 and on Friday, September 11th through Sunday, September 13th, it's time to celebrate Hopkinton's 300th birthday. As part of the 300th anniversary celebration weekend, on Friday, September 11th at 6 p.m., there will be a presentation of the Claflin Fountain. The restoration of the fountain took place starting September 1st. The town seal will be presented and there will be a ribbon cutting ceremony to welcome the restored fountain and kick off the celebration weekend. This will all take place at the town common. Saturday, September 12th, Poly Arts takes place at the Town Common from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Then at the middle school and high school, it's the Light Up the Night celebration, featuring live entertainment, food trucks, fireworks, children's activities, commemorative gifts, and more. The celebration wraps up on Sunday, September 13th with the 300th anniversary celebration parade from 1 to 4 p.m. The parade will feature 21 floats, 15 marching bands, 20 marching units, fire trucks, and antique cars. The parade will feature almost two dozen floats from local organizations and both regional and national marching bands, including the U.S. Navy Marching Band, the world-famous Mummers Parade from Philadelphia, the Shriners, and many more. If there are no parking signs on the side of the streets, be sure to obey them. Roads will close at 12 p.m. Taking a look at the parade route, the parade will head up Pleasant Street by Leonard Street and Montana Road, then turn on to Main Street and head down Hayden Road Street, where it will come to an end over by the middle school. For everything you need to know about Hopkinton's 300th anniversary celebration, be sure to head to HopkintonMA300.com. Stay tuned to our channels as well as our website HCAM.TV and social media pages for coverage of all 300th anniversary celebration events. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts recently opened up a portion of their newly renovated barn. A big turnout was on hand for the open house and the results were stunning. Here is a look inside the new renovations at the HCA. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts has been working on renovating the barn for months, and this past weekend they hosted an open house for a portion of it, and Executive Director Kelly Grill was thrilled about the response. This is uh, the turnout is um, more than we could have hoped for. It was wonderful to see everybody and people coming to find out information about classes and activities going on, but also just to find out about the facility. So it's been really, really fun to show everybody what we've been working on. All right, and a lot of work still going on, uh, and a lot more space set to open up soon. Can you give us a, a timeline on when do you think uh, this construction will be done? Yes, our hope is to finish the construction by the end of October. Um, our challenge is that we still have $250,000 left to raise. There are many opportunities for donations, and for name. there's naming opportunities at all different levels, and opportunities for people to get involved and help us with raising that funds, but if we're able to raise the remaining funds, then we are set to open 
then uh, have our grand opening, a gala on November 7th uh, here at the, uh, in the entire facility. All right, and uh, what are some of the ways that people can uh, help out? Well, there's, there's so many ways. Uh, so there's uh, tremendous volunteer opportunities on uh, the gala that we're running and our fundraising committee as well as um, there's opportunities to help in the office, there's opportunities to help with the theater and costume sets and props. Um, it's really endless. We're, we're just now building our core volunteer um, positions, I guess is <laughs> what you would call it. Uh, Melissa Anulat is our volunteer coordinator and um, she is lovely and has um, any number of opportunities to suit people's needs of what they can what they can offer to us. And can you talk about some of the things that are still to come here with this new construction? Yeah, the, ne the next part is, is super exciting. We're going to be um, putting the walls up in the lobby and uh, performance center. Uh, the parking will go in. We are designing a healing garden uh, to go outside uh, in memory of Nancy Barton, who was an art teacher here uh, and passed away sadly about five years ago. And her there's a memorial in her name, and so we are looking to design a garden and uh, have a place for people to come and just be. Uh, we also are designing a patio in the back uh, that we hope to have. Um, pavers and naming opportunities on our patio for our performances of a Sunset Jazz series and Shakespeare Under the Stars. Um, there's, there's a tremendous amount of work that still needs to be done and we'll be having campaigns um, specific to, to those uh, different needs. What's been amazing is the outpouring of ideas and need for classes. We have begun an entire new dance program. We have ballet classes, tap classes, and modern classes, uh, as well as a brand new program for little ones in um, music, to, Apple Country Music Together will be coming for infants and through age six for Mommy and Me music classes is brand new. We also have several uh, visual art classes that are new and new teachers. We have a relationship now with Boston Casting where we're offering acting for the camera and an opportunity to work with professionals in film and television. We have uh, classes in writing that are new, um, whether it's uh, memoir writing or creative writing classes and screenwriting classes so what's even more exciting are the possibilities of things that we haven't even thought of we have a yoga class that we're offering and we're offering classes for students who uh, have special needs as well as uh, seniors um, dance classes for seniors with mobility uh, who are mobility impaired it's just a, a tremendous opportunity for collaboration among many organizations here in town and uh, to try to meet the different needs of the region. With the additions, many new classes will take place at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Artist Priscilla Levesque was in attendance at the open house and she will be teaching a watercolor class starting September 17th. My name is Priscilla Levesque and um, I live in Lowell and I will be teaching watercolor painting here starting September 17th. There's going to be a class Thursday evening and also Friday mornings. I teach painting from observation, so we would start out by working from still lifes, which I would set up, and then we would also at some point practice working from photographs. For more information about the new programs and classes that will soon be taking place at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, head over to their website, hopartscenter.org. Fall is here, which means it's time to plan your next winter getaway. Our question of the week asks, what is your favorite getaway? Hey Courtney, what's the question of the week this week? Question of the week is, what's your favorite vacation spot? Jamaica man. <laughs> the grill. No other place. Cape Cod or Maine? Italy. And it have to be Disney World. Too many fun memories there. Oh man. Favorite vacation destination. Oh, um. You know, I just, I have to say there's a, a little resort in Lancaster, Pennsylvania I went to all the time as a kid. Uh, called Willow Valley, and uh, it's just always been a favorite of mine, even though it's not much. Um, somewhere warm, I guess. 
um, let's say Mexico. Spain. Barcelona. Uh, probably Orlando, Florida. All right, how come you like Orlando? Because it's Disney World. My favorite destination would have to be Cape Cod. Cape Cod is just a wonderful place to go. The beaches, um, the history, Cape Cod. I would have to say my parents' lake house up in New Hampshire. You know, I like Martha's Vineyard, even though it's sunny there. Oh, favorite in the world, that's a tough one. Uh, hailing from Ireland, it's gotta be somewhere in Ireland. I would say Edinburgh, Scotland's a close second. I'd have to say that because of the whole family thing, uh, we love to be on the Outer Banks uh, with the whole extended family sometime during the summer. It's always good. My favorite vacation destination in the world is probably Italy, because the food is just fantastic and it's a, just a beautiful country. In the world, uh, probably uh, going to New Orleans, Louisiana. It's a really fun city. In the world? Oh, geez. That would probably have to be Japan, just because I love the food, I love the culture, the people were so very friendly, and not to mention the fact that I just felt so at home when I was there. We want your opinion, too. Head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash HCAMTV, and let us know what your opinion is by commenting under the video or on our website, hcam.tv, in the comments section under the article. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will take you inside the Hopkinton Hillers football training camp. Courtney will preview everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider, and we will revisit some of the events that happened over the summer. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the HCAM studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting HCAM to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. Believe it or not, it is already September, and that means the high school football regular season will soon be starting up. The Hopkinton Hillers opened up training camp last week, and they are excited about what's to come in the 2015 season. The 2015 Hopkinton Hillers are getting ready for the season. The Hillers are coming off a 2014 season in which they made a playoff appearance and finished 5-6 and six overall. Despite losing some key offensive players to graduation, the Hillers this year feature an experienced offensive and defensive line. We've been doing some stations uh, in the beginning, some conditioning stations, and uh, then we just did some tackling stations. And we just did some o indie, which is uh, doing some offensive line drills, you know, working on our stances, stuff like that. But other than that, it's good practice, still got a long way to go. Everyone's pretty stout, you know, we're working hard in the off season, uh, ready to show off our talents. Uh, I think uh, this year's linemen are uh, athletes at the most. We have a lot of uh, dual sport athletes. Uh, we're really quick, we're really, really strong. So, I mean, I'm really feeling good about this season. It, it wouldn't be possible without my teammates and uh, my line mates. Um, you know, some of my best friends. So, with them, it's pretty easy, and um, we're just trying to be the best we can. The Hillers' returning offensive threats include quarterback Jake Kelleher and running back Sam Lehman. So we've had a good week of practice. We've got a lot of guys looking forward to the season coming up. All right, and uh, what do you think the biggest benefit is of this year's team? Uh, we have a lot of returning seniors. We got a lot of guys 
everybody's just excited. We're all football players. Everybody's been working all off season. Just been waiting for the fall. All right, now how's the uh, running core looking? We're looking good. We got a lot. Of, we have a deep core. A lot of guys to hand the ball to, so should be good. And a pretty deep line as well yeah. to uh, protect you guys in the backfield. Uh, the line uh, certainly seems to have some great experience coming back. Yeah, the line is definitely going to be a positive because they're very reliable. They're going to be knocking people down, push people back. It's going to make my job real easy. All right, and uh, what drills have you been uh, concentrating on so far in practice? Uh, just more cuts, ball security, you know, simple stuff for the first week before we get into more complex plays. Offensive coordinator Dan Sullivan is hoping to bring much versatility to the offense with the experienced line and running game. Uh, we're excited about the group we have for sure. Uh, a really good group of seniors, um, very strong offensive line, guys have put in a lot of work in the offseason. Um, so we, we feel like we have a strong group to move forward with. Good first week of camp here. All right, uh, now could you talk about some of the drills you worked on in this uh, first week of camp? Yeah, uh, on both sides of the ball, it's uh, just about installing our, our base offense, our base defense, uh, getting the kids in shape. Um, and uh, most of them, if uh, not close to all of them, uh, really worked hard to, to make sure they came in in good shape this season. Uh, so this week was easier on them than it has been on, on teams past because of uh, the work they put in. Now, how's the offense looking this year? I know a few big changes from last year. Yeah, uh, there's some, some key guys to uh, to replace, a lot of yards in the offense to replace, but um, with, with our line, uh, senior-laden line, uh, we feel like we can uh, run the ball well with the senior running back, Sam Lehman, who was in the mix last year, started on defense for us last year. Um, and then uh, Jay Kelleher coming back at, at uh, quarterback, um, who played the second half of last season for us, uh, should should uh, provide a good pass and attack with uh, a couple seniors out there, Nick Canal and uh, Jack Vicari, good weapons on the outside. So we feel like we're going to be pretty versatile on offense this year. All right, what are you going to be working on in the next couple of weeks? Uh, well, we have uh, three, three scrimmages coming up uh, with Hudson uh, on Saturday and then uh, Algonquin and uh, Haverhill next week. Uh, so we're going to have an opportunity to see what our kids can do against another team in pads, uh, see who's willing to, to block and tackle and um, figure out our personnel a little bit. Um, and we're going to continue to, to work towards that uh, first game on September 11th against uh, Whalen. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck this season. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. The Hopkinton Hillers kick off the season Friday, September 11th at Wayland High School. Three, one, two, three. Bye -bye. Be sure to catch all Hopkinton Hillers home games airing on HCAM Ed, as well as Hillers highlights and updates on our website. Summer has come and gone, and while many were away on vacation, some great events happened around town. Here is a look at some of the things you may have missed while away with our segment, In Case You Missed It. After Yogurt Beach was welcomed to town by the Chamber of Commerce and local business and government leaders, owner Chris Cooney talked to HCAM News about opening up in downtown Hopkinton. We've been residents for 22 years here, so we're very familiar with the area and the community and the families and kids. And um, we were introduced to this concept uh, a couple years ago. We opened one, uh, myself and my partners, down in Plainville, down 495. And we just thought it would be a really cool fit for Hopkinton. Uh, it's been very well received. The people of Hopkinton have been awesome. Um, we're, we're very excited about it and we really appreciate all the support that we've been getting. My family loves ice cream. We always shoot out as a family and we used to go to Yeoman's or DQ or somewhere in the area. And uh, we just thought it would be a really cool idea to have something downtown for the Hopkinton people as well as Ashland and Holliston and Southboro and kind of some of the people on the outskirts we could we could draw in. They wouldn't have to drive as far, and it's just so much easier. Uh, and it's just the convenience of it's really cool as well. Chris said he is thrilled at the reception his frozen yogurt shop has received so far. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's actually been, again, it's been so well received. It's, it's, I'll give you an example. The second day we were open was Friday, which was the last day of school, and kids got out early. And... I think on that day, for six or seven hours straight, we were constantly pumping in product into the machines, and people were going sideways trying to get up to the cashier to pay, and 
So it's it's again, it's been well received and it's just been crazy, but you know, crazy is a good thing. So we're, we're very happy about it. Chris was also very happy about how easy it has been to work with the town. I felt that was important to let everybody know that, and I also uh, wrote an open letter to Norm and the town manager to let him know that. And I can tell you that, you know, walking into this, I didn't really know what to expect because we hadn't opened a retail shop or anything like that here in Hopkinton. But, you know, from the DPW Water Department, Planning Department, Board of Health, uh, Building Department, uh, and everybody in between, they have been awesome. They've helped us with any problems we might have had. We've had a couple of obstacles we had to get over. And as opposed to them pushing it off, saying, hey, Chris, it's your problem, good luck. They've offered suggestions and really held our hand and, and guided us along the way. And I don't think a lot of people realize that there's a lot of positive going on and we should be proud that we have groups like this within Hopkinton that are passionate enough to actually want to do the right thing and do good things for the town. And that was really refreshing for me. And I, I thought everybody should know that in the ceremony we had earlier. And I'm very happy that you asked me that question as well. Hayden Rose Street shut down for a few minutes as over 2,500 participants ran the Sharon Timlin 5K, the races to help fight ALS, or as some know as Lou Gehrig's disease. The fund was set up in honor of Sharon Timlin, mother of former Red Sox pitcher Mike Timlin, who suffered from ALS. Well, we're lucky again. We have another beautiful sunshine day. Um, out of 12 years, I think we've only had one rainy day. So everybody comes out, everybody has a good time, a little sweat, a lot of laughter. And uh, for this year, my son actually beat me in this race for the first time. Uh, I did, yeah. But a lot of fun getting everybody out here running. Yeah, we really appreciate everybody that comes out, especially all the volunteers that put all this together. We just kind of basically show up and uh, uh, put a little face on, but you know, the whole face is, every face you see on a, every poster, they're the inspiration and in why we do this and we're trying to find a, a, a cure for this. I mean, you'll look around the rest of the day, there'll be hours, there'll still be people standing out here enjoying the fact that they can be out here. And it's Father's Day weekend, so if you turn it into a family event, which is what the volunteers have done for us here, it's just a great way to spend a Saturday, for sure. Very true, this is, this is a, it's a great event and it's, it's all about families of people that have been stricken with ALS and you know it kind of supports what they've done to help their their own patients and family members try to get over this and this is just something we can raise money to do it's great uh, we are here because our daughter-in-law Lauren Hayes Connolly and her husband are running in it and our whole family is here in fact is our son from California is here and um, it's really nice to see all these people out here to support this cause because needless to say, it's rather personal for us. For more information about the Sharon Timlin 5K and Family Fun Day, and to learn more on how you can help fight ALS, visit SharonTimlinRace.org. With the 300th anniversary celebration weekend coming up and school now in session, things are starting to get very busy on the HCAM channels. For everything coming up, we turn things over to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, September 4th at 8 p.m., Denise Hildreth joins the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts to talk about how she became the Youth and Family Services Program Director. I knew I needed to come back to practice when I'd be in classes with my students and they'd be talking about their internships yeah. and I'd be very jealous about what they were doing and really <laughs> wanting to go do what they were doing. Right. On Monday, September 7th at 8.30 p.m., the guidelines women should follow during breast cancer screenings as well as the risks and benefits of preventive measures are discussed on Physician Focus. Older women uh, that have smaller tumors, that tend to be slower growing tumors, uh, they may not need radiation. And others who get radiation, it used to be five or six and a half weeks of radiation. 
Now we have studies to show that doing it for three weeks is equally as effective for the majority of women. On Tuesday, September 8th at 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. The meeting can also be viewed on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. On Wednesday, September 9th at 8.30 p.m., Josh Hanna shares how the staff at the high school assists students and how the community assists the schools on All About Hopkinton. The biggest part is just that they emphasize the importance of school and that message coming from home and then of course we at the school level care about what we're doing. Our teachers work exceptionally hard mm -hmm. and our students are ready to learn bright and early. On Thursday, September 10th at 7 p.m., it's time for the first school committee meeting of the new school year, live on HCAM TV. Our HCAM Insider Newsletter is new and improved. If you want to sign up, head over to hcam.tv slash newsupdates. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget the 300th anniversary celebration weekend is Friday, September 11th through Sunday, September 13th. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including 300th anniversary celebration happenings and other local events. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy September. See you.